was flooded very recently. There was a big flood in October 25, and subsequently there was another flood on November 5. And then we are requested by the Alexandria Authority, and we saw that uh, based on the reports that uh, there was a huge rainfall uh, in Alexandria that was on October 25, and the amount of rainfall, there's some doubts how much it was. It was of the order of 40 millimeter uh, in a span of 30 minutes. And that's huge for this city because they have annual rainfall of the order of 190 millimeter. The city was not really prepared for such a high rainfall and a uh, large part of the city was flooded. Uh, seven people died and also a lot of damage happened. And our report, our mission was actually based on that to identify and analyze the flooding in October. Yeah, we, we went to um, Alexandria, not directly after the flood, but it was a few weeks in between. All the institutions involved did their utmost to, to, to help us, but at the end, till date, we don't have the flood maps, we do not have any idea about the concrete idea about the flood extent, neither the, the damages caused, uh, for instance, to the um, industry and tourism. So that was a bit difficult situation to work with. But on the other hand, it's so interesting to to learn that in this context of Arabic cities, uh, they are trying to survive the uh, Arabic Spring. Uh, there are refugees coming to the city, uh, so there are a lot of problems accumulating in that city. And uh, so it's a real challenge how to um, how to support the city government to, to go forward. And, and I think that was the, the main challenges we, yeah. we, we are facing. And, and The city is, was not absolutely prepared for this kind of flood because they don't have a forecasting system compared to most other cities around the world. They have a forecasting system where you know a few days ahead of time whether a flood would be coming or not. And good that with the use of the satellite data, we could prove uh, and demonstrate to the, our Egyptian authorities that uh, if they had a model and if they had used uh, this forecast rainfall, this, then they could have predicted the flood very well. And that we showed. That was really a good part of also of our mission. Uh, we have just finished the, the draft report and um, we, yeah, we arrived at some, I would say, very concrete um, uh, recommendations which can be taken on the short term. Uh, but yeah, the, the challenges are huge. It's, it's, it's a real, real big issue. Yeah. One of the advices um, we, we gave is that uh, early warning should help a lot if that would be, have been in place. And um, that it would probably be a mistake to jump too easy into, uh, say, the mode of uh, large investments. Uh, um, because I, I, what, what uh, yeah. Biswa already um, pointed out is that there was in this specific case a warning time and if that warning time would be there then the, the, the city would be better prepared and of course a lot of damage could be prevented um, so early warning which is is not that expensive yeah. uh, it is at least one of our first recommendations to to start investing in early warning and to create a, a bit bigger awareness yeah. among the citizens sure. about this this flood so i think education uh, is very much important and also not all components are known so we need to also carry out some research UNESCO as you can contribute carrying out some research work to have a big study not only on the city of Alexandria but also on the upstream catchment uh, and perhaps also combining with the coastal flooding possibilities that uh, uh, to see the complete gamut of risk coming from different sources. Now one um, activity we are now developing is to set up uh, a network of Arabic cities uh, and to support those cities to become each other's peers. Uh, so peer learning and city-to-city -city learning is at the heart of that, that, that new initiative. And so that city-to-city -city learning and, and supporting uh, cities in, in that peer learning process is, I think, one of the major um, challenges and opportunities uh, of UNESCO IG. Forecasting systems and finding out, you know, like, um, well, if city is flooded, then what are the areas which can be used as a, a storing water temporarily? This kind of finding solutions would be the uh, best solutions instead of going for very big, expensive solutions. It's, it's my feeling that uh, those cities have to 
have to learn and have to do the job by themselves and consultants and scientists can of course pr provide assistance in that but in, in essence the city is, themselves have to do the job.